going everyone? So I uploaded a video about a week ago where I installed an upgraded turbo on my 2008 Saab 93 Turbo X. So if you missed that video, make sure to go watch it right now. But I wanted today, I've gotten a lot of questions about uh, just how it's been since I've upgraded it. So I figured I'd do sort of a first drive or a quick drive with it today and talk about just kind of how it feels, the differences. Of course, I haven't gotten a tune yet. Um, I'm not going to talk about tunes in this video because I'm talking to some tuners right now trying to figure out, you know, who can do what and where I, you know, where I want to go. But uh, just to kind of hint at what, how the car has been doing in about the 150 miles I've put on it in the, in the week that I've had the turbo on. Um, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll leave that at that. Uh, I'll talk about that as we drive. I guess without any further ado, go ahead and pop the garage door open here. Got to move the 2.0 out of the way and then we can go ahead take this for a drive and of course the day that I upload the video on the turbo this hose comes in so that was great but I mean I'm not really gonna complain it's here so some great news it has been every day since I put this turbo on it has been well over a hundred degrees so that's uh, that's fun. Like I said, I've put I've actually put about 180 miles on the car since I uh, since I put the turbo on, and because of the misfire it has, um, I haven't really driven it hard at all. So, in terms of like really truly feeling the difference, even without a tune, I I can't really feel that yet. Although I will tell you, at lower RPMs. I like, guess I'm just kind of like coming out of my neighborhood right now. I mean, you're not going to be able to pick it up on camera because, you know, I've explained this before. It's just one of those noises that's just really hard to pick up on camera. Uh, but the turbo, like, you can really hear it just like kind of, it just sounds like, it just sounds better. Like, you can hear it more. It, it's, I don't know what else to say besides it. It, it sounds better. And I just had my e -sit sitting on my dash. And when I turned up, it flew across the dash and landed in the passenger uh, little pocket on the door. So that's interesting. Um, but I had that e -sit out because I pulled out the Tech 2 and I figured I could look at the car or look at the DTCs and it would tell me which cylinders had a misfire because you can do that on the 2.0s and I guess that's not a thing on the 2.8 you can't do that it won't tell you which cylinder it's misfiring from it didn't even tell me it was misfiring but when the car gets up here to temperature in a second I'm just gonna do like one and probably like third gear I don't know I mean it definitely does it feels like it has more like this turbo is built like the stock turbo but once you hit like around 5,000 RPM, it doesn't die off, but that's around when it probably makes like its peak boost in power. So this one's supposed to just keep going up as opposed to kind of dying off like the, uh, the stock turbo. So, I mean, that's just one of the benefits of it as opposed to, you know, also having, I guess, the potential to just make more boost in power. So in terms of, you know, one of the things I, I, I didn't want to lose when I did get this, this turbo upgrade was, I guess, just the low-end torque because, because of how, I guess, small the stock turbo is. It, it really spools up really quickly and it has a lot of low-end torque. I mean, you can pass people very easily without having to downshift. And from what I can tell, I don't really think I've lost any of that. And I'm going to be talking about tunes a lot, but like I said, I haven't decided on who I'm going to go with for a tune. Just because I'm still kind of in the process. I've reached out to like three different tuners so far. So I'm just kind of trying to figure out, you know, with what I have and with the injectors I have, if I can use those. That's a bit unfortunate, but you know, I, I understand where he's coming from. But um, I guess with the car up to temperature here, I'll let these, this freaking Corolla is just going to keep sitting in my blind spot. I'll let him pass me. And then I will just get on it once so you guys can see the uh, the great misfire. I mean, it. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just I'll just downshift to third gear here, slow down a little bit more. We'll do this from like 50, 55. Let's 
so uh, I think you guys could hear that pretty pretty clearly. It it doesn't misfire when you get on it. You know, like I'm in six gear now. So it's still got that low end torque. I can tell it takes just a little bit longer to build up, but I mean, it's still it still spools up quickly. So. I mean, I, I'm, I'm happy with that. Again, a tune could, could potentially change that, which I wouldn't really want it to. But once it, once it tries to make, I mean, this, the stock turbo that I had on it, on, according to the ESID, the most boost it ever made was probably about like 15 and a half pounds, and that would be on like a cool night. And then it would, it would misfire, you know, every now and then it wouldn't misfire that bad when I would reach those numbers. So clearly the car is, without a tune, making more boost already. The highest number that the, e I'm gonna plug the ESID back in here. The highest number that the ESID did read in the couple times that I have gotten on it, I think was around, I wanna say 15 point, it was around the same, but then again, that was also like 4,500 RPM, because when it started to misfire there, that was right at about 4,000 RPM. So like I said, it's just gonna keep building as I get higher in the, uh, in the rev range, so. Once I fix this misfire, then I can really take it for a true first drive. So unfortunately, this isn't like the first drive that I had envisioned it to be. And you know, it is a bit a, a bit sucky. But uh, I think what I'm gonna do, you guys saw that box of coils at the beginning of the video. I ordered new spark plugs. Those should be in on Monday. So you guys are seeing this video on Saturday, just kind of for a timeline. So I'll probably try and install those around you know, maybe I'll have a video out on that by Wednesday. It depends on if I get around to it by then. But uh, yeah, that box of coils, unfortunately, I bought those secondhand. And when I bought them, I didn't think to check if they were all Bosch, which, you know, you want to buy Bosch, you want to buy OEM coils when you're buying coil packs for these cars. And only two of them are Bosch. The other four don't really have a name on them, which means that they're not Bosch, which means that they're more than likely shit. But the guy that I did buy them from, you know, he, he wasn't trying to deceive me or anything. I just didn't think to ask. Uh, he said that the car he took them off, uh, it didn't have a misfire, it worked fine. So it's not going to be the smartest option to put non-OEM coils in a car that I'm going to be tuning for, you know, a significant more, more amount of power than what it's making from factory. Yeah, that was <laughs> just like as you let off the gas and the engine starts to like come down, you can just hear the turbo it just, oh, it, sound, it sounds so much better than the old one. But uh, what was I talking about? I was talking about coil packs. I think what I might do is replace the front three with two of the Bosch ones and one of the, uh, the non-OEM ones. Because if the misfire is coming from the front three, then, you know, thank God. I mean, so if I just replace those three and it goes away, then I'm just going to pretend nothing ever happened. And of course, uh, I'll put the new spark plugs in probably when I do finally get a tune. But best case scenario, I replace the front three coils with three of the ones that I have, and it solves the problem. If that's not the case and it gets worse or doesn't change, obviously one of the back three ones is the problem, and that means I'm going to have to do a little bit more work. In which case, I will just wait until I do spark plugs, and then I will probably just buy four OEM coils from ESOP parts. And thankfully, you know, they're not, they're not too expensive. They're like 45 bucks each. And, you know, it could, it could be worse. I just wish I didn't have to do it. One thing that's been mentioned is dyno tuning. I'm definitely not going to dyno tune it just because I don't want to put the car through that. And while dyno tuning would be a really great option in the sense that, you know, you can really get the car well set and it's just so much strain on the car and it's probably going to be, or it's probably going to end up costing more than a, uh, a just just an off the shelf tune, which I kind of just want to go something off the shelf. There's the uh, there's the update on the Turbo X. I also still have a new front lip that's been sitting in the house for probably about a month now. So uh, yeah, I ordered that when I ordered the uh, the power steering kit for the Arc, just to kind of put that into perspective. I've just been uh, not lazy. I've been busy more than anything with school wrapping up. So hopefully I'll get to that soon. Uh, we'll see. I'll do a video replacing that. But with that being said, that's really all I've got for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And let me know what you think down below in the comments. Leave your tuner suggestions down below in the comments. There are three tuners, like I said, that I've reached out to. And uh, when I make a decision, I'll let you guys know. Uh